Good evening, Joe. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 you're moving the thing. Hi, Chevelle. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Tomorrow, we're going to read a gospel. Tomorrow, March 7. We're going to read a gospel from St. Matthew. Chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. So, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so what does our Lord refer to here when he says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. What does he mean by that? You see, the Pharisees and the scribes were accusing Jesus of coming up with new teachings and of saying that, oh, you know, you are uh, trying to discredit everything that the prophets and the law have taught us. Okay? You have, you're trying to establish your own thing. But Jesus says, no, I am not trying to uh, change anything. I'm not trying to establish my own thing. I'm actually here to fulfill what the law and the prophets have told you from the very beginning. When he talks about the law and the prophets, what does that really symbolize? The law here, the law here is the Ten Commandments which was handed down through Moses, right? So Moses was the lawgiver in the Old Testament. He was the lawgiver. It was through him that the Ten Commandments were given to the Jewish people, to the, to the uh, chosen people of God. And the prophets, what do they signify? What do they signify? The prophets. Huh? The prophecies, yeah. Or the promises, the promises that, uh, that God has made to his people. That he was going to be their God and they, his people. Okay? Uh, we see that among uh, the many proclamations of uh, the prophets in different ways and manners of expression. Primarily from the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, you will be my, my people, I will be your God. And, and the prophecies of the prophets uh, centered mostly on the salvation of mankind. That, that there will be a Messiah. The promise of the Messiah, the promise of salvation, the promise of uh, God made man was going to happen. See? So that is what Jesus here meant with, when he says, uh, uh, the, the prophets, I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets i come to fulfill them right because precisely the fulfillment of uh, of the law was when he was going to to establish to promulgate it the prophecies of the prophets was referring to he himself being the savior and the messiah okay so jesus christ came to fulfill all of that now and he says None of these things have changed and nothing will change. Okay? Not one letter of the law will ever be changed because it needs to be fulfilled. Therefore, therefore, look at the, the warning of our Lord. Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean for us? You see, we are recipients 
of a very great treasure. The treasure of faith that we have received through our baptism is a very, very great treasure. It's the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, eh? which our Catholic faith uh, uh, and the Catholic Church is a recipient of. Eh? And we ourselves are recipients of this very big grace, the grace of faith, the gift of faith. And it is incumbent upon us. It is our obligation to do three things about it. First is to learn it. Second is to live it. And third, to teach it. Can we repeat that? What is our obligation as far as fidelity to our faith is concerned? We have to first learn it, then live it, and then teach it. Okay? So it is not enough to be faithful to our Catholic faith and to, the, and to the faith we have received. It is not enough just to learn it. It's not enough just to do that. Okay? It's not enough just to hear it and just to say, oh, those are nice words. Oh, those are nice, uh, those are nice things to read in the gospel. Those are nice things to read in the Bible. That's not enough. Okay? It's the, 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 the Bible and the things of faith are not a, uh, uh, just a literary masterpiece that we can enjoy reading okay? and makes us feel good. Nope, we have to go beyond that. Okay? We have to go learn our faith and then live it. Live our faith in the ordinary, everyday circumstances of our life. Our faith is not just a set of rules or a set of nice principles that are there uh, behind our heads and uh, are just nice things to, uh, to remember when they're handy. Right? That's not what our faith is all about. We have to live our faith every day. Every day of our lives, we have to put that faith into practice. And the third requirement is to teach it. So it's not enough just to learn it for, for pleasure or for, for uh, uh, intellectual satisfaction. It is not enough to just live it and keep it to ourselves and just be happy with what we're practicing. No, nope. we in fact have to teach it to others. That is part of our fidelity to our faith. We have to be instruments of spreading the faith. And we have to teach it to others. We have to teach it. So uh, our Lord tells us here, whoever, uh, whoever obeys and teaches. See? So whoever obeys, meaning he lives it. We live it. Part of our obedience is to live that faith. And then teach these commandments. To teach. So our Lord is clearly telling us here, we have the obligation to teach. Okay? We have the obligation to teach our faith. And he repeated this in many other ways. When he says, for example, to the apostles, go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said that uh, uh, when he uh, uh, resurrected, he said that before ascending into heaven. You know, he sent his disciples, uh, 72 of them to preach. See? So teaching other people about the faith is very much part and parcel of living the faith of believing that faith of believing in jesus christ and living as good christians good catholics in this world now for many of us perhaps the actual teaching might not come easy and may not be uh, uh we might not uh, come naturally it doesn't come naturally to us okay that is why we have to study our faith we have to really, really know our faith very well. But you see, there's one easy way of teaching. There's one easy way of teaching the faith. And that is by? Giving good example, Jacob. Very good. Yeah? Giving good example is one very good way, very easy way of teaching the faith to others. Okay? And... Uh, it's very consoling 
to see that when we give good example and people pick up our good example, it's very, very consoling uh, to, to realize that God is using us as instruments to bring His grace to many other people. Right? He uses us to awaken the faith in many other people. And all we are doing is giving good example. We had a very good example <laughs> of this, of this, uh, of how our good example has influenced plenty of people, right? And we are not talking about this just to uh, satisfy our own pride and, and, and vanity, right? Uh, we are not giving good example in order to uh, 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 satisfy ourselves. No, we, we try to give good example first because we want to live our faith and second because it's part and parcel of what our Lord wants us to do. Teach, right? Teach. So, like this morning, we saw these two uh, uh, elderly ladies uh, by the vestibule of the church, right? Trying to study how to use the missile for mass. Right? <laughs> right? And where did that come from? Well, one of those ladies approached us one day. When she realized that all of us are using the missile at mass. Right? And she in fact asked me where we got it from and, and how we use the missile. So could you imagine that very simple act of using the missile which helps us to participate in the mass better each day. Has already produced some effect. That little good example has already produced is very good effect. And she was not, these two Ladies were not the first ones. There were others before them who had already inquired about using the missile for mass. Very good, right? Very nice effect of our good example. And what else? Since we started kneeling down to receive communion and receive communion in the tongue, many other people have followed suit, right? Many other people have started receiving communion uh, kneeling down and in the tongue in order to honor Jesus Christ more when they receive communion. What else? Our good example has led even our own pastor to encourage everybody to start receiving communion by the tongue and not anymore by hand. See? And he even wrote about this in our uh, uh, bulletin. See? So there are many, many of these kinds of things we can teach people even if we don't open our mouths. We just have to give good example. Okay? So let us give thanks to God for using us as instruments of teaching other people about how to live our faith better. But you see, that also gives us plenty of responsibility. Okay? It gives, puts on our shoulders a very, very big responsibility for us to live our faith better and better every day. And also study our faith more and more. So your study of the catechism and your study of uh, Catholic doctrine and all that, you have to really uh, um, keep at it. There's no, there's no ending learning about our faith. And we have to try to learn it more and more every day. Okay? So what are the three things? To express our fidelity to our faith again. What are the three things? Number one is. Learn, learn the faith. Number two is. Learn. Live the faith. And number three. Teach. teach the faith. Primarily by giving good example. Okay. That's it for us. Hope uh, those of you who attend Mass tomorrow. Uh, will uh, have a better appreciation of what this gospel uh means for all of us and for those who are unable to go to mass at least you heard the gospel already tonight and you can hopefully live it better tomorrow okay folks thank you have a good night's sleep everybody bye good night good night chubby <laughs> okay oh let's turn it off now bye <laughs> hey <Shabbat. laughs> Okay, there. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, it's not good.